the Rust Belt, where in 2016 Hillary Clinton's dreams turned to dust. Donald Trump won Pennsylvania by just 44,000 votes, and it's places like this that swung it for him. Luzerne County in Pennsylvania voted for Barack Obama in 2008 and then again in 2012. But in 2016, something big changed. They voted for Donald Trump. How impeachment plays in communities like this one will be crucial in deciding who wins the White House in 2020. Pennsylvania is extremely important. It's one of the two or three states likely to decide the next presidential election. Uh, it has, of the battleground states, Pennsylvania, Michigan, and Wisconsin, these are the states with a large working class population that President Trump won in 2016. Pennsylvania, with its 20 electoral votes, is the largest of the three. And the state has already been inundated with the candidates. They're pouring into the state virtually every week one or more of the Democratic uh, presidential candidates are traveling through the state doing campaigning. In the snow-covered hills of Luzerne County, I'm on my way to meet a Muscovy duck named after the 44th president of the United States. Hello, are you Obama? No, Obama's right over there at the head one over That's there. Obama That's over there. Obama over there. Right where the gate opens. Eileen Sorokas and her husband Richard Obama. used to have uh, two passions in life. Democratic Party there's politics there's and domestic right. fat. Yeah. And he knows it. I call him O. o. You call him O? Yeah, hey O. Those yeah. interests came together in the names they and picked for their flock. Now only the ducks survive. Or at least most of them. Joe Biden was missing one day. I, I think something killed him. I don't know what got him, but he, was, he wasn't around anymore. I think, we see we have coyotes. Inside the house, Eileen has piles of political memorabilia. There's so much here that, you know, like I have to remember what I'm... In 2008, the couple campaigned for Barack Obama. But at the last yeah, election, yeah, I, a new face this, appears in her collection of treasured it. papers. Of the reason I voted for Trump is I was looking for change. And uh, Pre President Trump right now was a businessman. He wasn't uh, an insider of Washington. I know what really burned me up about Hillary is when she called the people deplorable and despicable and basement dwellers and losers. And she kept on calling us names. And that really turned me off, really. Sincerely. And up to that point, you were a Democrat. I'm still a Democrat, yeah, yeah. And what, what do you guys think of impeachment? What, what, how does impeachment sit with you? It doesn't sit very good with me at all because, really, he hasn't done anything. All it is is fabricated. The only thing I dislike is all of his Twitter remarks and his little smart aleck things, which, which isn't good for the country. But overall, I believe he's doing a, a good job. See you later. Thanks for your time. Okay. Leaving Richard and Eileen and their democratic ducks, I'm heading for a very different part of Pennsylvania, somewhere that the Democrats are seeing an extraordinary recovery, the suburbs. In the 2018 midterm congressional elections, the party picked up 41 seats from the Republicans right across America. 38 of them were suburban, like this district on the outskirts of Philadelphia. The number of nominations that each uh, congressional member has. Uh, the new congresswoman here is Madeleine Dean, a member of the House so Judiciary Committee, which decided the articles of impeachment against the president. She says she's not worried about losing votes because of this process. My role here in 2019 is to make sure I uh, prize our Constitution and don't give anybody a pass. Uh, you can't just say this is so difficult that we can't. Uh, uphold our constitutional duty, uh, we'll just look past wrongdoing uh, and, and hope that the next election fixes things. I feel just an obligation, so I don't, I try not to think about the danger or the downside. I think I have just a job to do. Have you had any pushback from any voters saying you shouldn't be doing this at all? Oh, sure. We get calls, uh, emails, uh, and, and we track them, uh, and, uh, you know, the, the percentage is the the vast majority believe that we're doing the right thing in an impeachment inquiry. Uh, and I think an awful lot of people are, are, are recognizing something very basic and central. 
uh, that there's an indecency uh, about this presidency that people are just exhausted by. Polling suggests that unlike voters in blue-collar rural towns, the suburban voters of America's commuter belt support impeachment. So the electoral impact of the move against the president may come down to this. Which of these two groups is more willing to turn out on polling day? The problem the Democrats have, if the Republican turnout, the Trump turnout among the working class voters is where it was in 2016, then it becomes more problematic whether the suburbs alone can deliver, can deliver the election to the Democrats. And that we're going to have to wait and find out. Back in Luzerne County, I could find no great appetite for the politics of impeachment. In this barber shop, I found more apathy than well, anger about events in Washington. The trouble with the impeachment is taken too long and people lose interest. I think people really don't care too much about it, especially people I've talked to. Um, they're more, in, more worried about their health care, more worried about jobs and everything else that goes along with the economy. So in the rural towns, the Democrats certainly can't count on impeachment bringing back lost voters to the party. The evidence is that many simply don't much care. Or if they do, they support the president. It may, though, be effective nonetheless in energizing voters in the suburbs who could decide the election. What impeachment won't do is heal America's divisions.